If you're struggling to play using the Times 24 difficulty in Phasmophobia, here are some tips and tricks on how you can survive, make money, and get the gold trophy from the Apocalypse Challenge. To do this challenge, you need to create a custom difficulty multiplier of at least 15 for bronze, at least 20 for silver, or you can get all three trophies at once using a custom multiplier of times 24. This is what the times 24 multiplier looks like. Feel free to pause this video so you can set it up for yourself if you're stuck. If you were looking to attempt just the bronze or silver trophy, I will link Psychohypnotics videos on the best settings for those difficulties. In this video, I will be explaining my strategy for getting the gold trophy. The first thing that you should do is make sure that you have good objectives. If you don't feel like you can complete them all, just reset and try again. Before I enter, I bring all the essentials to the front door, such as smudge sticks, lighters, candles, and crucifixes. You don't need any evidence equipment or flashlights. You can bring motion sensors or the parabolic microphone if you need it for your objectives. Otherwise, it's up to you. You can try this on Tanglewood, but you will not get the trophies unless you do this on Sunny Meadows. Set up camp by the front door by lighting your candles and placing your crucifixes. Also hold a smudge just in case the ghost decides to spawn really close to you. All normal ghosts will sound fast in this challenge, and the fast ghosts such as the Fae will sound even faster. A revenant almost sounds like a normal ghost at normal speed. It may be scary having a ghost room close to you, but it will help get your objectives completed without having to slowly crawl to the other side of the map. For the apocalypse challenge, you need to have the correct ghosts, complete all objectives, and get a ghost photo. Having a ghost closer to the entrance helps you get objectives such as candle, salt, and even crucifix, but that one can be scary to accomplish. Salt can also help you figure out if you have a teleporting ghost such as a wraith, but be careful with the candles, in case it is an Onryo, who can hunt immediately after blowing out a candle. The only photo required is the ghost photo, but it doesn't hurt to get some more pictures while I'm here. Practice on small maps, and once you feel ready, head on over to Sunny Meadows Institution to get the gold trophy. You can only complete this challenge in solo mode, so sorry, can't bring your friends along this time. Don't forget to set up camp at the front door. Or don't, I'm not your mom. But that is what I do when I play games on Times 24. It's rare that the ghost room can be here, but it may be close or might teleport to you. If you are struggling to see, feel free to open up your settings and turn your brightness up all the way. Just remember to put it back to normal when you go outside or reset. Right now, I'm going to walk around and show you some good hiding spots in case you do actually have a ghost here. I'm showing you where I am. I am walking towards the chapel right now, and I'm going to turn around and show you a hiding spot over here. You will need a hiding spot here if you do have a nearby ghost. There is a few here I recommend, but this one is probably the best to break line of sight and also has a quick escape around the table in case it is a Dio. You can technically hide in the front by the reception desk, but it is in a very good spot. The ghost can walk right up to you and kill you. So if you don't have smudges, be careful because you're probably gonna die. But you can hide there. You can hide by the desk. I think I hid here during my times 24 run, but again, it's not recommended. Another good spot is in the chapel next to the piano. This isn't guaranteed, but I still think it's a really good spot. And I've seen people survive here for their times 24 runs. You can also hide under the steps any hiding spots under the steps are not guaranteed because sometimes the ghosts roam there, but they can still be pretty good. Just make sure to have smudge sticks just in case. For the next few clips, I am zooming around, so don't mind me, but this next spot is really good as well. It's a little bit away, it's past the chapel on the right, but if you have a ghost down this hallway, it's a really good place to hide. On the left side, there is a hiding spot. You gotta go a little bit further down because this first door right here, there's nowhere to hide. So you have to go a pretty far down actually to get to this hiding spot. It's, I guess, worth it if the ghost is over here, but I'd probably just reset at this point. I wouldn't want to go all the way down here, but it's right here. It's not guaranteed, but it's a hiding spot. Don't forget that you're gonna be carrying things one at a time because you will be carrying a smudge and a lighter. You do walk very slow during this challenge, so it is best to be carrying a smudge stick and a lighter at all times. I attempted the Times 24 Gold Trophy on my Twitch channel a few weeks ago. I was live for almost 9 hours at this point and had been resetting for a few hours. I was exhausted but decided to try one more time before I ended because I was about to be gone for a week for TwitchCon so I really wanted to get this trophy before I left. Once I had all my things inside, I started to set up at the front door, waiting for the ghost to hunt so I can see that if it was nearby. 
I usually reset if it's not close to the chapel. Honestly, for this one, I almost reset it because I didn't think it was close by. But here, I suddenly heard it near the stairs. We're gonna die. There's no way, right? There's no way. Hatim! I mean, we got the repel. My objectives here was repel, ghost event, and photo of the ghost. I somehow didn't die here. And at least with these footsteps, it sounded like a normal ghost. I stayed around the front area because it seemed to be roaming around between the stairs and the chapel. But honestly, when it comes to this challenge, you need to get very lucky, which I did with the ghost photo. We got all the objectives. We just, we just don't know what it is. Oh my God. We got all the objectives. We just don't know what it is. Now what? What do I do? The reason I'm making this video is because many people have asked for it specifically and how I was able to get the gold trophy or how they can get the gold trophy. It's hard because this took me over three hours of resets and dying to be able to get it. And honestly, I got very lucky. You have to get the photo no matter what, but that was my objective. So I was able to get the photo and the ghost event. Repelling isn't that hard if you're able to survive, but it's not that hard as an objective is what I mean. But honestly, when it comes to figuring out the ghost, if you don't have a ghost that is super fast or just noticeable with its footsteps, it can be quite challenging because you are not super close to the ghost or you don't want to be super close to the ghost because you most likely will die. Remember how I said earlier that the footsteps sounded like a normal ghost at 150% speed? Well, in my game, I got very lucky because this actually was a mimic and it decided to mimic a rev, which a rev at 150% speed sounds like a normal ghost if you were playing a normal game. So like I said, with this challenge, you really need to get lucky because I didn't have to go anywhere near the ghost after I heard its footsteps. You can see that I got very, very lucky here. I was so excited to leave too, <laughs> honestly. I didn't get the bone or anything, but that doesn't matter. You don't need that for this challenge. And after getting everything, not the bone included, it was $1,930. Now, let me talk about the different ghost types in Phasmophobia. On the times 24 multiplier, the best ghost types to get are the ones that you can tell by its footsteps. Say, Hantu, Revenant, Moroi, the Twins, those are all ghosts that do not have the average footstep speed. Mylings have an average footstep speed, but sound much quieter than other ghosts. Raijus have a normal footstep speed. Unless they are around electronics, then they can be much faster. A wraith can teleport on top of you, no matter its location. A banshee and a phantom can roam and walk to your location, but they do not teleport. A diogen will run to your location, and you cannot hide from them and must loop them. If you think it is a deal, try looping it around the chapel. A poltergeist can throw a lot of items at once, and a mare has a rare chance to immediately turn off a light as you turn it on. There is no way to tell if a ghost is a Jin or a Goryeo or an Obaki because on times 24 you cannot get evidence. However, a mimic has fake orbs and it is easy to tell if you find the orbs or if the ghost completely changes speed like mine did. That can also be a big giveaway. Cleansing a normal ghost will prevent it from hunting for a minute and a half. Spirits will not be able to hunt for three minutes and a demon cannot hunt for only one minute. An Oni and a Phantom both have different blinking patterns than a normal ghost, 
but it might be hard to tell on times 24 because the ghosts move very, very fast. If you get this missed ghost event, it cannot be an Oni because Onis can only do physical events. So if you see this, you know it's not an Oni. Phantoms disappear when you take a picture of them and the picture will not look glitchy in the journal. An Onreal cannot hunt when surrounded by candles and they will not try to hunt or use a crucifix on top of a lit candle. Shades cannot hunt in the same room as you, which would be risky to test on times 24 since it is so fast, but still good to know. A wraith cannot leave the green footsteps from the salt. For a demon, the crucifix has a much larger range, so if a single crucifix prevents a hunt in a big room, it's probably a demon. Demons will also initiate hunts more often than other ghosts. The twins is only one ghost on the map, but it can only trigger motion sensors and step in the salt if it's in the location physically. The decoy cannot step in the salt or trigger the motion sensors, and it is about 10% faster than a normal ghost. With the regular twin, 10% slower than an average ghost. Yuri's can completely shut a door with a delayed door closing sound. Bitch, yokai's are probably the dumbest ghost in Phasmophobia. Because if they can't find you when you have your electronics on after running away, it's probably a yokai. I almost forgot the Banshee special sound on the parabolic microphone. At the end of the day, you just need to get lucky. Honestly, I know this video is about tips and tricks, which I did list some tips and tricks, but a big chunk of this really is getting lucky. Thank you for watching. Please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.